Welcome back to Haxby Shed and part three of repairing this Elliott 10M Shaper. And in this video, you'll see me mostly working on freeing up this two post swivel head, which was quite seized and quite distorted. And then I start work on repairing the slide here on the bull gear. I've still got a rotten cold. I've had it more than two weeks already. I'm sure we get them from the grandchildren every time they come round. They're like infection bombs. Anyway, <laughs> excuse the sniffles. I hope you find the video interesting. This swivel head is putting up a fight. I've had my foot on here, my foot on here, banging it with this rubber mallet. I've slowly got it to move round. I watched a YouTube, I think it was the Shed Dweller, and on that I could see that this head has to be turned 180 and then you can get it off the cam in here. But the pin on the back of here, which goes into here, is seized. Um, so it's still going to be quite a job. You can't get a straight knock at it either from inside of here. So it's just going to be grunt and hard work, I think. These blocks of wood are always handy. This won't hurt. Didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Nearly there. Actually, that isn't completely painless. Right, well, I hope that works. The manual is no help at all. We must be getting somewhere, look. Now I can spin this all the way around, so perhaps I can get this pin out. Tap it from the other side. No, I can't, unless it needs to be a certain way here. I bet there's a flat on it somewhere. No, this has been standing on end all night, soaked with penetrating oil. And I checked that YouTube channel that I talked about and it was Paul the Shed Dweller and he'd been disassembling an Alba Shaper. So I realised basically this vertical slide needs to be pointing down as we've got it but then this pin has to come out. But even like this, last evening, I was really having to smack this pin to get it out. I was still concerned that I was going to break something but no, that's how it comes apart. And with this pin out, I should be able to knock this off now. What's the best way? There is no best way. It's starting to move, I can see. It really doesn't want to come, does it? <laughs> Goodness me! I think we're going to end up next door. Oh, that must be so close by now. Why is it so tight? Oh, wrong hammer. Goodness. <laughs> oh, look, it's almost, almost. My piece of wood is splitting. Jeepers. There it is. I've often suspected this part here, the back, and this peg, are not original to this shaper. 
because the colour of this, underneath the grey that I painted on, is slightly different. It was more of a greeny. Anyway, it was a different colour from this part and the rest of the shaper. So, you know, maybe the smash that caused that bull gear stroke adjustment track to break also broke this. I don't know. I'm only making guesses, of course. And you can see that this casting here is kind of sloped around compared to this. So there's a gap appearing there, an angle, off angle, and it's the reverse on the other side. Can you see here? This is creeping across relative to this. But it still slides vertically. The calibration marks line up. So whether, you know, this was just a Friday afternoon job, I can't say. I mean, it works. So, I don't know. This is pretty bright already. I'll have to clean it up somehow and get it to move freely. Yeah, measuring from the root of that dovetail to this edge is 30 mil. And on this side, it's 25, 26. Just measuring there against there. 17. 16. Yeah, 16. I've got that running within half a thou. 0.1 of a mil. Now we'll check this here. I've packed it out as best as I can, and I'm hoping that this is like this and not doing this here. Well, I've tried and tried clocking this, and I just can't get all these faces consistent enough. So, I'm just going to polish it. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that I didn't wind myself into the lathe as I was trying to polish this spigot here. But having tried it into the ram, it's still too tight and I could feel with my fingers on this in the lathe that it was doing this. So it's oval at the front here, this front part of the peg, I think it's quite lumpy. So I'm going to have another go and see if I can machine this peg. So there's a center at the end of this long spigot peg. I'm trying to line it up here. If I can clock it, which I haven't done yet, I'll center drill it at this side and then run the whole thing between centers and then see if I can machine the front part of that peg. It's taken me a long time to get this rig set up here. I think it looks good though, don't you? I'm trusting, of course, that this ring and the peg are concentric. Uh, don't really know how to double check that because I can't get the gauge in at the back here. What can you do? Feels all right to me. Actually, that sounds like a joke, but I can get some feeling from it. Now nah, that'll do. Right, we'll try and centre this now. Do you know, I think it's amazing what you can do on this lathe. It's such a good one. Right, get the centres out. Well, I'm using this driving plate here and I'm set up between centres. And do you know what? I'm getting the same readings that I got when I had this in the forejaw but I just couldn't believe it. But I do now. So that's 12 one hundredths of a millimeter, which is getting on for five thou out of round. And if I move this along, um, it's worse. Let's say that it's worse. Look at that. Bit worse. Yeah, that's like 15. Oh, more than that. 17. What's 17 times 0.4, folks? That'll give you in thou. So that's well out of round, assuming the center is right. I mean, you've got to work on some assumption, haven't you? So I'm going to have to give this a light skim, but because it's between centers, I can take it out, try it, put it back, and it should set up just the same. Anyway, I could have done this in the four jaw, as it turns out, but you know, it's so easy to get it wrong. Yeah, well, no wonder it's binding. I'm just taking the tiniest scrape off this. 
it may look as if this is not in the center, that it's eccentric and it's doing this, but I think it's more irregular kind of egg shape somehow. So it's just scratching the surface here and just on here. So I'll just do a bit, maybe to there, and then I'll try it in the ram and we'll just see. Okay, well, when I put this in the head, it's fine up to here where I've machined, but when it gets pushed in far enough to engage this, as I turn it, it goes tight and loose, tight and loose. So I am going to have to finish this machining and take it right into here. This screwed peg goes in here into a groove in this locking spindle and obviously stops the locking spindle sliding this side and this side but unfortunately it must have been snapped off at some point because that nut's supposed to go on it so I'll have to make another one of those at some point but anyway if I unlock this this swivels freely now and there it's locked. So that's done. The neoprene has arrived and I've cut this ring seal. And the idea is that this goes here and extends to about where those screws go in. And on the bearing, it'll sit about there. Now it's not these bearings, they're the old ones, but the new ones have arrived. So I'm just going to machine this back here just to give a smoother surface for this to adhere to. I'm probably going to stick it on with some kind of uh, Eva stick type of thing. It may not stay, don't know. That's what we're doing. Well, this casting surface is a bit variable. Over this side, it was about 1.3 that I measured, I think. Over here, it's nearly two, the step. Talking about the step, although this surface is a bit coming out towards us anyway by this point. So I think I'd have been better to get two millimeter neoprene. This has turned out to be 1.6. But at least it won't be binding too tightly. And with some of this glue, I think it'll just keep the dust out of it. Yeah, because this edge here is about there. So there's still a gap and uh, the dust would get in and you know, evidenced by the fact that both bearings are as rough as anything. So that will go just over the outside and hopefully keep the dirt out. Now for this end, I can't put a shield on there because there isn't room. So what I can do is put something here on this face and I've ordered up a disc of two millimeter steel plate already cut to size. That'll be here in a few days. We'll put a hole in the middle of it to go over this snap ring. And with five UNC 632 countersunk Allen screws in there and that'll be the shield at this side. So whilst we're waiting for that plate to come We'll take a look at the bull gear and set that up in the mill. This is the T piece I made out of white plastic and it just stopped the slider coming up too far and off the end of this track here where it's broken but of course it limited our stroke to nine inches so I want to get that back again. Here's the piece that broke off. Well it is all there but there just is nowhere to fix it. The only place I could try and screw it would be just there well, this broken piece is too thin by that point. So I think the only thing I can do, or the easiest thing to do, is to machine this across here to this point, 
keep keep this pillar whatever you want to call it put a piece in here screw it through maybe extend it beyond here so it presses up against this something like that we can do that on the mill it's poetic I think that my first job on the mill because I only got it recently is to fix the shaper apart from the few test cuts that I did when I got this machine recently this is the first time I've used a milling machine on a project since I was 17 and that was a horizontal mill so this is the first time that I've ever used a vertical mill on a project since I was like forever so you'll have to give me a you know a bit of slack here but I have uh, trammed the table I've got this lined up at 90 and all I'm doing is taking off the broken part really and I'm taking it down as far as I need to to get to clean metal Not quite, it needs to be a little bit deeper to take the last of that tea off there. I want all of that removed. Have you seen my new machine? No. The big one there to that side, that one, that's new for me. Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it does? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll show you in a bit then.